everybody and welcome back to LMM. It is Sunday morning and for most people at this time it would be a leisure lie-in, a nice relaxing breakfast or just enjoying the tranquility of Sunday. Others amongst us, it's time to take the fire engine out for a run. For today, we're heading off to Stonham Barn for their, the big bus meet. Yes, and I'm very aware that this is not a bus. I have explained that to them, but we're going nonetheless. So enjoy a little trip out with us in Dukes as we go and take it to its first show of this year. Now, the other big thing to take from this trip is this will be the furthest that Dupes has traveled under its own power this year. Which also means it will be the furthest it's traveled under its own power last year and the year before that. I'm not scared. Petrified, I think that's the term. It's moments like this when we're driving down on the back roads. I'm not scared of dupes and I don't think it handles badly or anything, but you see the videos of firefighters, professionals, driving these in anger, going to a shout, and you realise just the size of the cojones on those chaps, the way that they just throw these things around. You're like, nope, I definitely would not do that. Bearing in mind as well that dupes is light, I don't have any of the equipment that they would normally have. I am also lacking four burly firemen in the back and a tank of water. So it would handle totally differently and very heavily. Yet, they just throw it around. It's quite outstanding. I think it's somewhere here. And I think it's where all those signs are. Yes. I imagine those are buses going to it as well. Being a bus show. Yes. Hello. I'm a bus, apparently. You look like a bus. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's have a um, lock it power on, please. Both on. I'm a bus. A bu yes, it's a, it's a bus. You've got eight seats in a dome. Yeah, yeah, well, I've got six. <laughs> it is, though. Follow the road down, round to the left at the end. We're going to put you over at the other end of the arena next to the Arctic trailer on the corner. Right. All right? Yep, someone will point me where I'm going, right? Put you where you're going, all right? So, all the way in the left. I see it. Where are we going? Right. We should have gone the uniforms. Yeah. 
stayed on the path. <laughs> Look at me go. I remain being a bus. I'm still not sure what we're doing past here, but... Yep. On the corner. So just reverse off it anywhere. That's a reverse gear, which is... Following some slight manoeuvres, we were set up and ready, and it turned out we are actually early, so we were able to sit back and watch some of the actual buses turn up for the show. I literally thought that said feeling coaches, not peeling coaches, and I thought that feelings was a good name. What are you doing today, feeling coaches? My God, my life flashed before my eyes for a few brief moments, sir. So we parked on our own. So I'm opening up some of the lockers just so that you can see what's going on. And oh, I just realized I have seats. Ah, oh, I'm now one of these show people sitting with my vehicle on a nice summer's day. I've hit the goal. I'm a show person taking my vehicle to a show which made it let's just not kind of gloss over the fact that it got here it's looking shiny and wonderful and i've got a seat all i need is an ice cream now and i will be made so we have arrived and set up with my bus and all of the other buses now the observant amongst you will have noticed that dupes is in fact not a bus which brings up that very interesting question of why is it at the big bus show here at stonham barnes well, that's because I'm friendly with the organisers who went, oh, do you want to bring it along and be part of the event? And I went, yeah, why not? So for this event, behold my honorary bus. It's been quite amusing watching like the kids come around and be like, bus! And we're like, no, no. I mean, it is a double decker because it does have upstairs seating, allow me to demonstrate to you, especially on a day like today. It's like um, one of the London buses, you know, one of the um, route masters. You have to come to the back to climb up. And then uh, it is only uh, sitting room only, but one can sit on the, on the top deck as well. It is very, very hot. Ha. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. This was the first time a bus show had been held at Stun and Barnes, and there was quite the impressive turnout. Buses from a variety of different ages, double and single deckers. And of course, nestled amongst all of these was a vintage Dennis RS-130, looking very, very small in comparison. But it turned out that it was actually quite a popular thing. And it wasn't too long before a queue had formed of people wanting to have a look and get their photo inside the cab of a fire engine. And this ended up taking up a fair amount of my day. But once the queue had abated, I set off to have a little look around at some of the buses at the show. Ooh. 
Now, admittedly, it does look a little bit strange being parked up with just the buses. On the other hand, yeah, I know what one I'd rather have. And so, the thing I like most in this lineup is the Volvo B10M, which is that one there. The peeling delivery. I think it's very smart. I love the bits of chrome on it. That's exactly what I like. I like the double headlights. Chrome makes something cool. Big, nice split windscreen. That. That is very, very nice indeed. Look at that. Also, chrome wheels. Yeah. Just... As buses go, I think that's beautiful. Love the livery, love the shiny bits on it, love the headlights, love the logo, love the fact that Bristol is actually sign written on it. Love Jupiter in the background. It's just a really nice, and I love the little indicators as well, just such a lovely bit of detail. Oh, big Mercedes coach. Imagine all the things you could do with that. Like, can you imagine turning that into like a mobile home or something? That would be quite special. All that space. I continued my walk around marvelling at all the different shapes and liveries that the buses were in. It's something that I'm always really fascinated by, just how the same machine can look so very different when a different colour is applied to it. There were a couple of things that really attracted my attention. Most notably was the three axle coach that's coming up on the screen now. I thought that was really quite special. But of course, there was something that I found more interesting. Ah, uh, I found the dangerous bits. Things that are for sale. How much is a TE20 these days? 1500 quid? Hmm. That seems a lot. What is it? Is it the petrol? Yes. That looks like petrol. I don't think that's TVO. It's got some water in there as well. Ooh, those wings have seen better days as well. Tell me guys, is 1500 quid the right price for one of these or is that a bit much for its state? I do really like these little tractors though. They're really, really cute. Oh yeah, look at that. I'll tell you one thing, those cars are worth a fortune. Ooh, Vauxhall, and this is for sale as well. Now this, how much is this? Oh, God, that's quite a bit of money. It's, th it's almost four grand for what it is. It's basically just a Reliant pickup. That's very interesting. I like that. It's very cute. So this is a Kombuta Cushman, and I like this a lot, and I want one. That Vauxhall's very pretty as well, but it doesn't say for sale. So I'm moving away from this big old Van Hool triple axle. There's this gorgeous Bedford. Again, I love all the chrome on it, the double headlights, all of that is just beautiful. Look at that. Definitely would have something like that. That's gorgeous. Then, I don't even know what that is. I'll be honest, I don't know what that is either. Is that a Volvo? Certainly one after it's Volvo, because it says Volvo and they look the same. I think these are the two that turned up as we turned up. Which is a bit modern for my taste, but still fine. An Optes Solo, these kind of things that uh, run around me locally. A proper route master, absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Do, do like that, would have one. And then this as well, this is very pretty. Loving the colours on the the, the the cream and the blue is just, that's a Leyland, that's a Leopard. Yes, like the one we drove. So there's a nice bit of history with this Dennis Dart. This was bought by the current owner's father. He bought it new, and then he was an apprentice who worked on it when it was in service. So he had to buy it because he'd worked on it. His dad had ordered it, and I think that's really nice. And then over here, well, if you're gonna get a coach and convert it to a camper, that is about perfect, isn't it? Look at the size of that. That's the most diddy cute coach I think I've ever seen, and I think that is fantastic. I have no idea who the builder is, but it's brilliant. And then this is one of Eatswitch Buses things. So Eatswitch Buses have um, come along and supported the event by bringing one of the buses off Route 13. 
So that's one of the things I see go past semi-regularly. So that's kind of cool, actually. It's nice when uh, the actual bus guys come and support a bus event. Uh, yeah, quite a nice variety of old, new bus, coach, and bitten, and doodah. And with the buses looked at, I returned to what was obviously my favourite vehicle at the show, and sat down and relaxed, and met up with a couple of you guys who'd come to say hello, and just enjoyed the afternoon until things started to leave. So, we are now decided it's time to depart. Many of the buses have now left. They've done the best in show, and amazingly, we didn't win the best bus in show, which, frankly, I'm offended at and uh, slightly disappointed by. Ah, and there is the organiser. How do? How do? Everyone seems to be disappearing. The buses can get out of here, I must be able to get out of here. Oh. For sale? How much is that one? Is that 1700? Yes. And with that, still bitter, we headed off to our next location. So we're now about to go to part two of Dukes' Grand Day Out as we approach the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway. Completely uninvited, unannounced and um, unexpected. So I can only imagine how happy they'll be on a tinder dry day to see a fire engine arriving at the site. So the car park's behind us, but I don't think I can legitimately fit this in there. So we're just going to drive up to the main end. I mean, it's a show vehicle, so I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Probably. Entrance to railway, that'll do. We're not in anybody's way here. Not at all. Right, main reason I'm here is I want some paint. I love calling in at the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. It just oozes atmosphere more than any other place I've ever visited. It really feels like a little light railway. On display at the front was the recently restored Fowler Shredded Wheat, which was a recipient of an HRA prize last year, and a couple of the vintage coaches sit in the platform. Sadly, there was no steam today, because the railway runs next door to a field, and a weiss that had been cut, there was still too much risk of setting fire to all of the stubble. The locomotive that should have been running was Whittington, something that has not been at the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway for years, and when it was last here, I wasn't even a driver. So the motive power was the Ruston 165. Yes, that Ruston, that was the subject of the first Lorry Goes Loco, looking notably better now than it did when we shot the video. And with that, I went and found my paint, and went and had a can of drink. So, the day is finished here at the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway, they are all packing up, which means it's probably time for us to disappear as well. So if I can get this back to the shed, it will be a successful day out. And with that, thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this little day out in a day in the life of having a fire engine. And if you have, how about clicking on some of the links that are coming up on the screen now for other 
fire engine related adventures. And if you want more information on the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway, there's a link to in the video description. With that, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. How on earth did he get an Arctic out of here?